So at this point, I've got a site. We've all got a site which is on localhost, which means that it's only on your computer. It's not live yet. Later on, we'll have a discussion about internet service providers and domains and URLs and all of that stuff later. Because let's say we make a great website this month and next month. Well, now we need to get it live for people to actually see and buy our products. There's going to be a whole discussion on that. That'll be later, but if you need immediate help on that, we have usually the, the lab time at the end of the day. Remember, about 30 minutes, we can talk one-on-one -on -one at that time or during the breaks, but it's all planned out. So the last thing that we did was we created a blog post. As you can see then, the, um, the home page of my site then displays the latest blog post. Below that is the older blog post. We talked last time that this is the default behavior of WordPress. It will create for us a classic blog type of site in that the latest posts will take over the home page. I instead want a static home page in that there's always the same information on the home page unless I choose to change it and the blog content is on its own link perhaps that says blog. I want to change that. And as we said last time, we don't quite have the skills to do that yet because we know where the setting is, and if you forgot, we'll see where it is. But there's a setting that will let us go from the blog style to the static style. In order for us to do that, we need a little setup. We need placeholders. We need a placeholder page for the home page, and we need a placeholder page for the blogs, posts, and pages. So we're going to need a couple of pages as placeholders for our site. I'm in the front end. How do I get back to the back end again? Hover your mouse over the name of your site. Dashboard, yes. Or shortcut, just click the name of your site. When you're on the front end and you click the name of your site, it takes you to the dashboard. When you're on the back end, just click the name of your site, it takes you to the front end. So I'm in, the, I'm in the dashboard, I'm in the back end again. And there's several ways to do the same thing, whatever's fastest for you. One way is if you hover over pages, we have Add New. Another way is usually whatever screen we're in, we're always going to have this top bar, and we've got New Post Media Page User. So there's always going to be also a quick way to get to New Page under new. So whatever way you want, either on the new menu at the top, create a new page, or hover over pages and then click add new. Pages, add new. You're going to get a screen that looks almost exactly the same as the blog post, new blog, but this is the standard WordPress screen. There's always going to be a box for a title and a main text. When we get to products, we'll have that as well. When we get to adding products to sell, we will need to add a product title and a product description. And under description, we can add pictures and bullet points and all that great stuff. But here, we're thinking about it in terms of as a page. And so I want to create a home page page. So at the top of your title, let's just call it Home. This is going to be what I show on my home page, on my home screen. When someone visits my site, if it was a real site, this is what they would see first. And I just want to very briefly say uh, hello and welcome to my site. This is terrible, but let's just write something because we can edit it later. And again, there's a bunch of boxes and options throughout the place. Don't worry about them yet. I just want to create a page with a title and a little content and click on the right side, Publish. If you're used to classic ways of making a website, you had to deal with creating files and folders. You had to create your own HTML file. You have to create folders for your pictures and all of that. 
a modern software like WordPress or others, Joomla, Wix, Squarespace, etc., are a modern type of software known as a CMS, Content Management System. And that simply means that WordPress will manage a lot of your content. You don't have to worry about creating pages, uh, pages with file names and folders and all of that management. Uh, WordPress will do it for you, Content Management System. So WordPress is a, is a CMS, a content management system. And so it automatically, notice here, it created a link. Localhost slash WordPress slash index PHP home, whatever yours says. But it automatically created this structure, these pages and names, based on what you wrote here. So we don't have to worry about folders and file names and links and broken links. To some degree, WordPress manages it for us. This is going to be our placeholder for our home page. I now want to create a placeholder page for all our blog posts. I don't want my blog posts to take over my home page. I want them to be in their own screen. So now we see here actually three ways to create a brand new page. Do you see the third way? We have page, add new. We have new page, and we have Add new page here. We can add a new page. So there's three ways now from this screen. There's, you're never far away from creating content in WordPress. So any way you want, click to add another new page. On our page title here, we'll call it the blog. We can of course change this later if we want. We'll call it the blog capital letters, human readable that is. And then right here we'll just say, welcome to the blog. <coughs> Read my blog. Welcome to the blog. Something. Welcome to the blog. Don't worry about any of the other details, just click Publish. Publish on the right side. So I've created a home page, I've created a blog page. Where do you think we go in WordPress to see all of our pages? Uh, close. I want to go here to all pages. I want to see all my pages. The question? Oh, yeah. Our, our question was that when we created that Victor uh, bakery, that's not the home page? No, that is, that is my whole site. That's Technically, a home page is just that, that one page. A website could have many pages. Right. A moment ago, we created the home page. <clears throat> and sometimes it's interchangeable. Visit my home page. Visit my website. People use it the same interchangeably. Technically, they're different. Thank you for pointing it out. But the home page that we created is just one screen of the whole site of Victor's Bakery. That's the index page. Yes. <clears throat> so here, let's click on all pages so that we can see this. These are the different pages of my site. Home, page, sample page. We didn't create that. That was there for us and the blog page. These are all the pages. Why don't I see that intro blog post here? It's not a page, it's a post. So posts are in their own screen and pages are in their own screen. If you look at posts, all posts, then you'll see the welcome message and the hello world. That's the screen I was actually talking about. Oh, yeah. So there was a blog post that was saying welcome. It was just a blog post. And again, the big difference is you're not going to change the home page that often. You're not going to change the about page that often. You're not going to change the contact page that often. Those are pages. Those, that's for content that doesn't change that often. <clears throat> 
posts are content. Posts is content that does change often. You're going to write some new blog post once a month, let's say, or once every three weeks, or once a quarter, or once a week, or once a day, or whatever it is that you have the tolerance for blogging. You're going to be <laughs> You're going to be blogging on a regular basis, and that is going to—they're all going to be stored under posts. So basically, the more uh, frequent you blog, is that better? Better chance of you ranking higher than? It is, yeah. but you don't want to simply only think about uh, quantity. You also want to think about quality. So if we're posting something every day, but it's you know stuff that we copied and pasted from some other website that's not so good if it's something that we post very often but let's say we purchased 500 blog posts well, if we purchase 500 blog posts probably someone else purchased 500 blog posts and so we have duplicate content and so yes uh, posting on a regular basis as a beginner a very good goal is once a month one new blog post once a month that's doable and the more you post out the more the search engines could find you potentially and people I'm going to go back to. Yes. That's what we're about to do right now. Because it's not automatic. I have a page for all my blogs, but it's not there automatic. Here's what we need to do now hover over settings menu and then select reading. Now we need to change the default behavior of WordPress. By default, WordPress is going to put all your blog posts on the home page. I don't want that. I want them in the blog page. So we tell WordPress that by hovering over settings and reading. This should look familiar. We looked at it on the first day, didn't we? There's the default. The front page, what would you like the front page to display? My latest post? No, a static page. So turn on static page. A little static page radio button. Now it says, okay, what template or what placeholder would you like to show on the front page and where would you like your posts to be saved onto what template? So front page, select home, and posts, select the blog. At the very bottom, make sure you click Save Changes and then Visit Site. Remember when I say Visit Site, that's my shorthand to go to the front end. So make sure you've saved it and then Visit Site. Now the front page says Home. Hello and welcome to my site. Did everyone get that? The front page, when I clicked on it, dropped down and didn't do anything. No, that means you didn't create the pages, maybe. Oh, 
All right, so um, <clears throat> this is what a lot of people want nowadays. They want a website where the home page has static content, and if they choose to read the blog, then they can click a link that says blog. But if you have a keen eye, you'll see there's no link anywhere for the blogs. We did put the blogs in the blog page placeholder, but we don't see it anywhere. That's because by default, <clears throat> WordPress might not show you what you expect. For example, it doesn't know that you need, that you want to display a menu with these links and such. So we need to talk about WordPress menus. Let's go back to the dashboard. Hover over appearance. And then we'll see many options here, which we'll look at, but we want to look right now at menus. <coughs> appearance menus. We can have multiple menus. <clears throat> we can have <clears throat> different designs for our site, which are known as themes. And a theme can have a side menu, maybe a top menu, maybe a footer menu. It depends on the theme. When we talk about themes, that'll make more sense. But I'm often going to say in this class and the next class, it depends on the theme. Someone's going to ask, how do you do this? Why does it do that? I'm going to often say, it depends on the theme. Because the theme is the design of the site. And on our current design, we don't have any menu. Notice there's nothing here. Edit menu, there's no menu. Nothing is here. So it's asking for a menu name first. And we can have multiple menus. Let's say we, we've got this bakery and <clears throat> During the month of October, we have an extra item on our menu that says Halloween treats. So when Halloween is over, we want to remove that from the menu. So we can have one menu that has the Halloween items. We can have another menu that doesn't. So we need to name our menus. We can have as many as we want, but we need to name them to differentiate them. So do you see a box at the top that says menu name? Let's call that main menu. This is the main default menu, which will have my usual links, but I can create as many customized menus as I want. And it's going to depend on the theme how they, how they function or where they're placed, where they're visible. So type main menu, and then on the right side, select create the menu. So now the screen changes a little more complexly. Let me tell you in general what we're looking at, and then, we're, and then we'll set it up. On the left side, we can choose what to put into our menu. On the top right, this will show you our menu structure. And then on the bottom right, it'll show you where to place our menu. So what I would say always, look at, you might be spent a lot of time crafting your menu, and you still don't see it. Because I want you to memorize, always look under the menu settings section, theme location. None of these are turned on at the moment. And we have two options to display our menus in the primary menu section and in the social links menu section. Depending on the theme, you might have one location for a menu or four. And so if you crafted this menu and it still doesn't display, you have to look. My main menu is not being attached to any location on my theme. This is my main menu. I want it displayed in the primary menu location. I don't know what that looks like exactly. I can't visualize that. There's really no feedback to tell you. That's going to be on the left. It depends on the theme. But it's no big deal to activate some of these options, visit site. That's wrong. So I'll go back and edit it. That's wrong. I go back and edit it. That's right. So it's no big deal to make changes to save, visit site, and see your results. Especially since we're working on WAMP, we're working on our local host, this is not a real site that people can look at and laugh at when we make mistakes. It's here on our own server, so no one's going to see us 
as we're learning WordPress and improving our site. So let's select Primary Menu and then Save Menu. So we've got a menu named, we've got it placed within our design, but we don't have anything on the menu yet. That's where this left side comes in. We can add pages to our menu, we can add custom links, we can add categories and other things, products when we get to products. But we've got pages. So on my main menu, I want to display a button to take us home and a button to take us to the blog. So you want to select the blog and home and add it to the menu. We don't want that sample page. It's just a sample. Add to menu. Let's click Save Menu and Visit Site. <coughs> so click on the name of your site to visit site. Look at this. The blog and home. <coughs> click the blog. There's my latest blog post. There's my first blog post. Click on the home button, it goes back to the home page. Not found probably means you changed your permalink structure. Let's see about that. So did everyone get their uh, their menu to work? So here's my menu. It's okay. I want to make it better. I want to, for example, change the order. I want home to be first and then blog. I want to change that order. Maybe I want to add other things to the, blog, uh, to the menu as well. So notice if you hover over the name of your site, shortcut, back to menus. I'm on the front end, so then I have that shortcut back to menus. But if you're in the back end, it's, there's no shortcut there. So if you're already in the back end, you go to Appearance and then Menus. Let's go back to the menus. Let me take this back to the editing screen here. I'm editing my main menu. Uh, these are my items in the menu. If I want to change the order of things, the first one is the first one, and the second one is the second one. On my design here, there's the first one, there's the second. Some menus will be horizontal, but it'll still be vertical here. The first one will be the first one on the left, then the next one is the next one on the left, and the third one is the third one on the left. Even if you've got a horizontal menu, you will still see vertical 
order here. So if I want the home button to be first instead of the blog button, all you have to do, notice if you put your mouse on top of one of these, you get the four-headed arrow again. If you click and drag up, <coughs> now the home button will be first and the blog button will be second. Remember to save for that to take effect. At home, I've got blog. Let's say I also wanted to add an extra link. I've only got two pages. We can't create pages here. They have to already exist in order for us to add them to the menu. Let's say I want a link over to my Amazon account. Let's say I'm also selling stuff on Amazon. So where can I select Amazon here? Custom links. custom links. Let's open the custom links panel. What's your address? What's the text to display on the menu? So let's just put whatever you want, or I'll just put Amazon.com. And the link will be Amazon Sales or something. There will be now a new link on my menu, custom link from some other website, after I click Add to Menu, of course. Just typing it here doesn't do anything. You have to click Add to Menu. So now my menu will show Home, the Blog, Amazon Sales. And it says on the right, this is a page that you created, this is a page you created, but this is a custom link. And later when we talk about products and categories and other stuff, they will be marked there as well. And let's say for whatever reason, actually I want Amazon sales to be visible before the blog. Well, simply drag and drop. But be careful, because notice what I did here, I dragged Amazon sales below home. I'm going to save it. You don't have to do this, but I did something wrong on purpose. And when I go over to the home page, hmm, I added Amazon. Where is it? It's a drop down of home. I didn't want that. If you want that, that's useful. If you didn't want that, that's annoying. But what's going on here is when you edit your menu and you put an item indented as part of a other item, it now becomes a drop-down menu item. So sometimes you have to drag this and kind of move it around and make sure it's on the same level. See how these are all on the same indentation? If you move an item, let's say I wanted to rearrange things and then I put the blog like this under Amazon, now the blog is going to be a drop-down menu item of Amazon, which in my case doesn't make sense. And so, if I had done that, I have Home, Amazon Sales, and then drop down the blog. I'm just making you aware of that because that's always a mistake people make. This, even though it looks like I'm putting it where I think I'm putting it, the dotted line is telling me exactly where it's going to go. So as I said, I can have more than one menu. I can swap out a seasonal menu for another seasonal menu. But depending on the theme, I might have more than one menu location. And how do I know that? Well, this screen is telling me that. This screen is telling me my theme has these two locations, a primary menu and a social links menu. I can't visualize, and it doesn't tell me where do these actually show up on screen, unfortunately. Um, but here's what we'll do. I want to create another menu. I want to create another menu to display my social media links. That's one of the things of modern SEO. You're going to create a great-looking website. You're going to add a blog, but you're also going to use social media. So modern SEO 
takes a lot of effort because there's just so many websites out there, yet another Realty website, yet another gluten-free website, yet another instructor's website, yet another dog walking website. There's so many websites out there, the way you're going to get found is to put more content out there than your competitors. So one way, in addition to blogging, is social media. Get on Twitter, get on Facebook, get on the network that they're not on. Get on Snapchat, get on Periscope, get on uh, all these other ones you haven't heard of, get on um, uh, get on Ello, get on um, Tu, get on QQ, etc. All of these networks out there. That of course is a full-time job. But uh, for our purposes at the moment, I want to add a brand new menu of a couple of social networks. Let's say my company does have a Twitter and a Facebook. I want to add that to its own menu here. So that means at the top, edit your menu or create a new menu. It's kind of it's kind of hidden in place, isn't it? There is the button to create a new menu. Instead of an obvious button, it's just a little link. But we're going to create a new menu so that we can list all our social media. Click create a new menu. We got a brand new blank structure. It asks for a name. Let's just call it social menu. Doesn't matter. That means you need to save. Oh, yes, exactly. Okay. Remember to save and then it'll let you leave. Click create menu, social menu. And now before we do anything, now at the bottom it says, our current team has these locations. The primary menu is being currently used by the main menu. The social links menu is not being used. So this social menu that we just created is going to be used by the social links menu placeholder. Let's save that. We've got a menu name, it's set to a location, now we'll add links. All of these will be custom links, because they're not pages in your site, they're not categories, we haven't talked about categories yet, these are all custom links. So if you've got a Facebook or a Twitter, you can add it in, here's my company's links, facebook.com slash PMD Interactive, and this is Facebook. And use this one if you'd like. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. And the link is Facebook. That's what's going to display on the menu. Add it to the menu. And then we'll add Twitter. Twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. So add to menu, I'll add another one, twitter.com, PMD Interactive, and the link text here is Twitter. Don't forget to add to menu and then save the menu. Save the menu. And then visit site. There's my main menu, and right below it is my social menu and it automatically puts the links, the, the icons for the links.
So this is our social menu. It's separate from our main menu, and it's set to the social links uh, placeholder. And depending on the theme, it took the it took the the link and turned it into the icon. Not every uh, theme will do this. Some would simply show it as text. So the theme is the whole design of your site. And that's a very powerful thing. In this particular theme, it takes a link, social link, and it turns into an icon. And so if you wanted to add more to it, you could just go back to the to the dashboard, appearance menus, and at the top, now that you've got more than one menu, select a menu to edit. Are you editing the main menu? Or are you selecting the social menu? Under the dashboard, you're going to go into appearance and then you're going to go into menus. So I'm going to add another one here. So here's one that you've never heard of before. Here's another social network. Uh, HTTP colon slash slash TSU dot CO slash PMD interactive two dot co. This has been getting a little, it's been out for several months now, probably came out at the beginning of this year, uh, but it's been getting kind of a lot of attention in the past couple of weeks because Facebook hates them. Facebook hates them so much that they've banned any mention of this network on their network. So much so that people started to realize, okay, I'm sharing a link from my Tzu account to Facebook, and Facebook isn't even letting me post it. Okay? Well, you might say, well, who cares? Facebook, you know, post Facebook stuff on Facebook. But Facebook has gone and retroactively back in time and deleted everyone's mentions of that network. And Facebook has banned it that you can't even say that in a private one-on-one -on -one messenger conversation. So, I'm telling you about it. Sue.co is a brand new social network, relatively new, that you can uh, share, post, and pictures, and chat with friends and all of that. But the big difference between this one is it pays you. If you use Facebook, uh, Facebook is making money off of you hate to break it to you, but Facebook is making money off of you. Sue also makes money off of you, but it shares that revenue with you, like 40%. So if you create a free Sue account, um, you can share stuff online and social media and get SEO, good SEO results, and get paid. I've already made a cool 21 cents. <laughs> Nope, you still own it. That's their big difference. Uh, you need an invitation to get into Tzu, and I'm giving you one. The invitation is the name of my company on Tzu. TSU.co, not .com, slash PMD Interactive. If you follow that link to create the free Tzu account, you'll have yet another social media avenue. Maybe your competitors don't. You post stuff here. This is people, because uh, love it or hate it, Facebook is a very big company, our friends and family are there, um, and all of that. But, you know, these sorts of things that the company does sometimes, sometimes people don't like that. And so there's alternative networks, and this one came out because they want your content to be your content, and the money made off of your content to go to you, not to Facebook. And so if you'd like to get into this network, just follow the link here, sign up for it, you'll get an account and access, and then whatever content you post there will um, be yours, and you'll also profit from it. Now the... Um, that network is so new, it has no icon. That's not the official, official Sue icon. When this theme doesn't recognize that network, it just puts a generic icon, which that's not the, the Sue icon. Um, just FYI. 
But then there it is. There's a link on the home page to another network. I can put as many as I want here. They'll just make a new row. If the network is not that well known, it's just going to give the generic icon. So what does that look like for icons? I think it's just the, the name of it, TSU, with a little bar over the U to, for pronunciation. Two. So this is part of customizing WordPress. We want to create a menu structure depending on our theme. We want to put items on screen in the menu. We can rearrange it, add links, custom links, internal links. These are internal links. You go from one page inside your own site. Custom links are external links. They go off to someone else's site. Before we leave this screen about menus, have you gone to websites where you click a link and it goes to some other website but it opens in a different window or a different tab? I want that because on our site currently, if someone visits our site and they follow Twitter, the Twitter link, the, the screen changes, the tab or the, or the window changes to Twitter and someone then goes to Twitter and does everything that they want to do on Twitter and then they... Uh, get tired of Twitter and then they close the tab and then suddenly the they're gone the website is gone so what we want to do is we want to activate the ability for a brand new tab to open up so instead what we want to do is back on our back on our menu here we've got the ability to make a brand new tab open up. We've got here under the menus, this is open in a new tab. But this is one of these advanced options that is not on by default. Let's do this. Let's make sure we're all under the appearance menu right here. Appearance and menus. And um, on the top right corner, click on screen options. <clears throat> Click on screen options. Screen options. And we've got some things that are not turned on here. Posts. If you wanted to add a post to your menus, you could. You just have to turn on posts. If you want to add tags, which we have not talked about, or format, we can. But here's what we care about at the moment link target. So turn on the link target and now when you when you click to edit any of your links here, if you click on the triangle next to any of these links you get these options and one of the options is open link in a new window or tab. If you didn't have link target turned on, nothing is there. So you turn on link target, it's hidden in the screen options, and now you have open link in a new window. You do have to turn it on for every link that is going to be an external link, but once you've figured out where that's at, that's no big deal, is it? So I would recommend on any link that is an external link, that goes off to some other website, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, whatever, that's an external link. I would recommend you turn on that option, open link in a new window. That way a person can visit that other external link and um, when they're finished with Twitter, let's say, they close the Twitter tab at the top. I'm on Twitter, they close Twitter, they're still on your site. You probably see that all the time. You visit websites, you follow links, they go elsewhere, you close that tab, but you're still on the original website. And that's open links in a new tab. If you turn any of these on, remember to click Save. Save the menu. OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to save that. We'll do one more thing. We'll take a short break, and then what I want to do is I want to save my work. We're going to get close to the end of the day um, eventually, and I want to save all of this work. You know, we might you might think, well, we haven't done too much, but we we've created. Uh, menu items, we've added pages, we've changed the settings of the site, we've done a lot of things. I don't want to redo that next time. So after we talk about themes, we'll take a break, then we'll talk about backing up our site so that we can continue to work on it next week and not start over. Any questions about the menus before I switch gears to themes? Yes? Um, during the break will be good, but the main thing is just to confirm your, your address here. Yeah, so that's the address. If it didn't quite work, it's not a big deal, but we'll check during the break. So I've got these links on a menu, and the current design for my site is, is this right here, which is kind of basic grays and light grays and dark grays it's not that interesting to look at this is the theme and this is the design of the site you might think well WordPress looks boring WordPress can look very very exciting and unique we just need to put the right theme in place so we're gonna talk about themes in short there are free themes and premium themes the free themes of course are free and the premium themes cost some amount of money. They can be $5, $50, $500, $5,000, just for the design, just for the theme. Because obviously, it had to be designed. It had to be crafted and created and, and, and made unique and such. So we'll be talking about the free ones. But the premium ones are also good. And later on, we'll talk about some resources that I would recommend for good premium affordable themes. Let's, wherever you're at, let's make sure we're on the dashboard. So let's just click on the top dashboard just to make sure we're in the dashboard. And if you hover over appearance, we have themes. So we're going to click on themes. And by default, we have three themes available. The 2015 theme, which is currently active, and there's the preview of it, looks a little bit nicer than ours, simply because it's got a picture to catch your attention. Then we've got 2014, which is a different design. It looks dark and a lot of boxes and such. And then we've got 2013, so it's really basic. So just to see what this other theme looks like, 2014, hover over 2014, and you will see activate. So you can have many themes installed, but only one can be active at a time. So hover over 2014 and click activate, and then visit site. Notice now the active slot is taken over by 2014. Let's visit site. Look at this. The menu on the left side now is dark. We've got this top, top dark menu over here. We've got home and stuff. On the top right corner, I see home, sample page, the blog. That doesn't sound like my menu. My menu had home and the blog. Here's the thing that always trips up beginners. When you switch from theme to theme, it doesn't know where to put your menu. Because one menu may call it uh, primary menu. Uh, one theme may call it primary menu location. Another theme may call it top menu location. So WordPress doesn't know to stick your menu from one location to another. We have to do it manually. This is always a beginner pitfall. Um, you created this great menu system and then it just kind of puts something whatever because it doesn't know what we want. So this is the design. Let's fix our menus. Let's go back to appearance menus. Not that we have to recreate the menus, we just have to tell WordPress here's the menu you, that you should use. 
Let's go back to menus. It's under appearance. And here it is. There are no menus. There's a top primary menu and a secondary menu in left sidebar. So that's why I didn't know where to put our items. Let's do this. At the top, I am editing the social menu. I want to switch to the main menu. If yours is already main menu, good. But I need to switch. Switch to main menu and then select. Okay, so I'm editing my main menu. And I want to place my main menu on the top primary menu. So my menu is already saved. It just doesn't know where to go, where to be placed. So make sure you've selected the top primary menu for the main menu, and then save. Now we'll switch. Also notice here, main menu, it's on the top primary. Now we'll switch to social, and let's put it on the other menu location. Switch to the social menu, remember to select it. At the bottom we'll say, let's put that in the secondary menu, in the left sidebar. Save it, and then visit site. So we've got a place for menus, and now the menus in their place. Save that, visit site. This particular theme, its menu, is a horizontal top menu on the top right. Home, the blog, Amazon sales. And the secondary menu that it's talking mm -hmm. about is right here. Facebook, Twitter, too. It doesn't show it as icons because, as I said, that depends on the theme. In this theme, since it's 2014, made last year, it didn't have that functionality, so it's text links. It works. I like the icons better. But that's what this theme provides. Yes. What's the, uh, uh, the HTML code that's on the bottom of the uh, cover? We'll be talking about comments and such, but notice we have the ability for someone to leave a comment. Oh, okay. And so if they would like to format their comment with a little bit of HTML, they can. We'll talk about that because I don't want people to leave a comment on my home page. That's a little weird. I want them to leave comments on the blog. So we need to turn that off, but we'll, we'll get to it later. So here now, then, on our menu, we've got our menu items. We've got this new design, and just like you always see on the commercials for fast food especially, the fast food on the TV commercials and such looks amazing. And then you buy that hamburger and it's squashed and lopsided and the pickles, the pickles falling out. <laughs> so same thing here. These look great. But then when you actually activate it, mine doesn't look as great. Because these show you the best foot forward. They've got the picture filled in, they've got the sidebar graphics and videos, and ours is pretty plain. Well, there's a whole section of customization, we're not going to look at it yet, but that's how you make your plain looking hamburger like the supreme one. You go to the customize and change the variety of settings to make it look like the original. And it would be nice if as soon as you activate the theme it looks like the original. But the problem is that these again are always set up in a way to really show off the capabilities of the theme, even on a premium theme. And this is always frustrating because you look at a great theme you pay $40 for it, you activate it, and it doesn't look like that. It will eventually, by customizing it and reading the manual and such, but just a little buyer beware. Let's activate the 2013 theme. Can you get back into the theme screen without me telling you? Go back to themes and turn on the 2013 theme and go look at what that one looks like. And keeping in mind that you'll probably have to reactivate your menus. See if you can do that as well. Activate 2013 and activate your menus. Twenty thirteen is more of a horizontal style. 
you get a big section of of a picture. There's my menu here. Again, it's got the default menu. I don't want that one. Then a main content area. After the main content area, we've got then a footer. Look at these horizontal footer areas, and then at the bottom. Just for fun, I'm going to go back to the menus. And again, there's no menu selected. And this particular theme only has one menu location, the navigation menu. Some will have a minimum of one, and some will have like four or more. It depends on the theme. But I'm going to say that on my main menu, I will attach that to the navigation menu. And so my main menu will have the navigation menu. And there we go. Home, the blog, Amazon sales. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, you have main menu and social menu? But then you're saying you don't have at the bottom here? There's a, on your screen, selected menu to edit. Mm -hmm. you don't have to have that. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break very soon. Let me, let me help you in just one moment. So we've switched between um, three built in themes. There's hundreds more to choose from. Let me, let me show you this. Let me open up the world of WordPress themes, then we'll take a break so you can explore this, and then we'll come back and, and wrap up the day. But let's say we, we go back to the themes screen under Appearance. Appearance and Themes. These are the three we've got built in. When we go back to themes, appearance, at the top here, let's select add new. Click add new there. This will then take us to the theme showcase, the WordPress theme showcase. Featured, popular, latest, and search. So featured, I, ha I, I find it hard to believe that this theme is featured. <laughs> it's a little basic. This one looks nice. This one looks nice. But notice what you can do. So that this is Top Cat Light. This is Profound. This is Simply Red. These are all of the names of themes. You can hover over a theme and click Preview, although you won't get the best perspective of what it really looks like until you activate it. We've got Install. So let's say any of these that you see. Let's say Top Cat Light. I'm going to click Install. You have to do two things. When the theme is not built in, you have to click Install. It'll connect to the WordPress mothership right here. It'll download it, but then you have to remember to activate it. You can have as many themes as you want, remember, but you have to activate it. This is free. This one is free, yes. Any that are not free will, will clearly state it. So we're safe with this one so far. So click activate. Yes, remember to click activate. <laughs> It'll then tell you you've got active top cat. These are un de deactivated, inactive at the moment. You want to visit site. This is obviously going to look like a great site. So I'm going to visit site. It's good. It's got that background. It's got this design, transparency, side menu. They're using the default menu list again. I have to edit that. This is what I want. This is what I want to pique your interest with. Try these themes. Explore. Go back to appearance, themes, add new. Look at featured, look at popular, look at latest, or search. Put in a keyword. What about restaurant? 
put in different keywords there in search, you get a bunch of themes right here, 2,000 to choose from. And this is only from the official WordPress marketplace. We can find 200,000 more if we go do a Yahoo search, a Google search, a Bing search, an AOL search. If we go off and do a search, we're going to find 200,000 more. But what I want you to do, just to explore this, search around, look at the theme. If, if it is a paid theme, it will tell you. There's going to be a dollar symbol. All of these seem to be free. There's also however themes that are under the freemium model which is that they will give you a free version of the theme which works really well but extra features are premium and that's where the five dollars comes in or forty dollars or one hundred dollars and so it doesn't hurt to try out a bunch of themes see how they work how they look like maybe I like this curtains theme just you know you can click the preview but it really doesn't show you exactly what it looks like and then until you have your content, and you can install, remember to activate visit site. So now I've got a brand new theme. Looks kind of weird on mine, but new theme. So let's uh, let's take our final break. Let's uh, it's 3:05. Let's take a 10-minute break. Maybe explore these themes a bit. If you have any questions, call me over. And then when we come back, we'll go into look at sheet number four. I'm going to turn the printer back on. If you need sheet number four, we're going to look at sheet number four to archive our site to save our site so that we can take it with us. Unfortunately, we can't just drag from the WW folder into our flash drive, we have to follow the steps of sheet number four to archive our site and take it with us. So we'll be back at 3.06 and we'll do that.